In this video I'll be looking at how you can use a scatter plot to map out three different aspects of reliability and visualize it. The first is going to be unavailability, the second is mean time between failures, and the third is going to be using the size to represent the cost of the repairs and the cost of the business of these outages. So I'll be talking you through why this is a useful tool and how to set it up. Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. So when it comes to visualizing the reliability of machines, then a scatter plot is a really useful tool. And we can see here that we've got a scatter plot here and each one of these points here represents a different pump. Okay, so I've just created this information here. Um, we've got three different aspects that we want to analyze because the three of them are really important to understand where to focus our efforts when it comes to reliability improvement. So the first is downtime um, cost. So this is a total cost of downtime. So how much is it cost in the organization to not have that available in terms of lost production potentially? And also how much is it cost into to actually go and affect a, a breakdown repair or, or, or some sort of corrective maintenance. The second is going to be uh, availability. Now I've actually plotted unavailability and I'll explain why in a second, but availability tells us how frequently over a period of time, so if we look at this date range here, it's over a, a three range, date, a two range period, a two year period here, how much of that time is the machine available? Okay, now I've got another couple of videos that I'll leave links to below that explain a lot of this information and how to actually calculate these values. Um, so check them out if you're interested in, in working out availability, mean time between failures, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then the final one is the mean time between failures in hours. So how frequently does a machine fail? Okay. Now, the important thing to realize here is that something can fail quite frequently, but be available quite a lot of the time because it's going to perhaps trip and then you just turn it off and turn it on again, like you would with a PC or whatever. Um, uh, so the two aspects of reliability are quite important when it comes to that. Um, so let's go through how we can set this up because it is a really useful visualization. So I'm also going to add this background here just to actually help further segment the machines into different areas that further focus on the, the bad actors and the machines that might need a bit of attention. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to add a new visual and I am going to change this into this one here, which is a scatter chart. Okay. And if we look at the inputs here, we've got Basically, we've got quite a few different inputs we can we can add in here, and I'm not going to use all of them just now. I have created a video on scatter charts that I'll leave a link to below, but we're going to use the values of the x-axis, the y-axis, and we're going to use the size. And each one of those is going to represent a different dimension that we need to um, we're looking to analyse as far as the the reliability and the the cost of business of these machines are. So if we look at our data model, it's really straightforward. So I've got equipment, so that's a piece of equipment we're analysing. We've got the total downtime costs, we've got the availability, and we've got the mean time between failures. So all of these are terms that are related to reliability. Now you can obviously transfer this across to um, other aspects, but this is really focused on um, on reliability analysis here. Um, now, like I mentioned before, just briefly at the start of the video, that I do have in-depth videos that explain exactly how to calculate these from a transaction level up. But for this example here, to keep it simple, I've just typed the figures directly into an Excel spreadsheet and, and pulled them in. So let's get back into this. So I've got this, um, I've created this scatter plot visual here, scatter chart visual here. And I'm just going to go in and start to populate these um, fields here. So we'll start off with the X axis along the bottom here. And we want that to be the mean time between failures. Okay, so it's going to be here. So I'm just going to pull that in, okay, and then we want the y-axis. That's going to be the downtime, or sorry, the unavailable. It's going to be the unavailability. Now I've got availability. Um, I'm actually going to use availability just to show you why I use unavailability um, in a, in a second. But we've got that in there, and then the actual value that we're going to analyze is going to be the equipment. Okay, so we can start to see each one of these items of equipment appear on this chart here. 
and then the size is going to be the the total cost of downtime. Okay, we know we should start to see a size appear here. Okay, so um, if we just go and and look at this just now, so if we take this piece of equipment here, we can see that it's fairly um, low in both counts. Okay. Now it's got low availability and it's also got low mean time between failures. Um, so it means it's failing quite frequently now. And in fact, if I click on here, we can see that is exactly the case. Okay, 12% of the time and it's failing ev roughly every 120, every 130 hours, more or less. Okay, so we can see that's the case. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to add a label onto each one of these and that's going to basically call out the, the machine now obviously there's going to be a limit to the number of the machines that you can display on here I've got here probably about you know seven or eight here um, yeah you so you don't want hundreds tens would be up to tens low tens 20s would be probably okay but to add a label in here we're going to go in and add in the category label okay so we can see each of the machines is now available which is great and that really calls out each one of these so that we can identify what it actually is without having to hover over it. So you can hover over it, um, but that's that label there. Now we're going to just update the title here. Okay, so the next thing is that th this this axis here looks a little bit squashed, okay? So let's see if we can tidy that up. We're going to go to the Y axis, we're going to go to the range, it's on auto. Now I want to lock it the minimum. Now it doesn't look like it's actually been locked at, at zero here. It's auto scaling this. So I want to lock that at zero. And then at the top level, I'm going to just stick that as 1. Okay, so we can be guaranteed that the range is between 1 and 100. Now, we can auto-calculate that, um, but we'll leave that for just now, because that looks as if it's fairly good. Um, right, next, that's looking okay. The mean time between failures is fine. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a background into here to add a little bit of extra segmentation of each one of these different machines into an area that would be interested in in terms of bad actors and good performers and things that are kind of middle of the road. So let's nip across to PowerPoint and I'll explain how I set that up. Okay, so I'm in PowerPoint and I've started to just build out these just using um, shapes, basically just square shapes. That's all I've done. And the key thing here is to get the ratios here correct for what you actually want to create in terms of the, the segments on the actual the background of the scatter chart. So if I look at this one here, um, we go in and go to shape, format shape, and I go to size, we can see that this here, the width is six centimeters, and this one here is four, okay? So, so the total length in centimeters here is 10, and the ratio is basically 60, 40. Okay, so that's quite important. Um, because I want this to represent 60% and this to represent 40% of this scale here, okay? So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, the next one is here, so I want this one here to be, um, the height is 2.5 centimeters, and this one is 7.5 centimeters. So this is a 75, 25% ratio. So that's going to be 75% and 60%. So the top 75, uh, the 75% of the highest of unavailability and the 60% of the highest mean time between failures, machines will fall into this category here. Okay, so you can play with that if you want. It could be 50, it could be 90, 10, it could be 50, 50 or whatever, but that seems to work fine for me. So all I do once I've done that, I just need to make sure that that is right. And we can use these lines just to line it up. Is just um, select this and then just save that as a picture. Okay. So I'm back in here now and I'm going to go to my, click on the, the scatter plot. And I'm going to go to plot area background, browse. And I'm going to pick this grid that I exported and then I'm going to go in here and just sit, select this fit okay so we can see here that it scaled it here to be the the values that we're interested in here and um, that is 60% that's 40% it's just auto scaled it along here okay so we've got the mean time between failures now the one thing I 
that we've got here is we've got availability. Okay, so obviously high availability, good. High mean time between failures, good. So these are all machines that are really good. And also the size is small, so we can see that they are machines that probably don't need much in the way of um, any focus. We've got this one here, which is high availability, reasonably low unavailability. So this is machines that are borderline. Well, this one here has probably got needing to be looked at because it's cost a lot of money because we can tell straight away by the size here that it is, um, it's costing quite a lot to maintain this and it's costing a lot to the business if it fails. This is borderline, but these are definitely ones that we'd want to actually look at. Now, the other way we can look at it is sometimes with risk matrices, you really want to be having the 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 red at the top here. You know, so the top corner um, is where you want to actually put the bad actors. Now we can do that quite simply by just reversing this to unavailability. So we've got all the information we need, and I'm just going to talk you through the steps for 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 making that change. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to add in a, a new call, um, yeah, a new column here, and I'm going to call this unavailability, and it is going to be equal to one minus the availability. All right, and once we've got that, I am going to add an explicit measure, and we're just going to make it the average. Okay, now we're, because we're always going to be looking at these, it doesn't really make sense to to do the average here. In fact, these totals don't make sense apart from for this. But these totals don't really make too much sense. But that's what I'm going to do, just to get as a, a figure there to, to calculate the measure. Could easily could easily have just have done some if we wanted to, uh, because we'll always just be looking at on a, that on a, a an equipment by equipment basis. But let's just use average for just now because it kind of makes a bit more sense. I'm just going to go and I'm going to hide the actual columns. Okay, so let's pull this one in, and we're going to replace availability with unavailability. Now we will need to go and just make a little change there to turn it into a percentage. Right, so the ne the final thing we need to do is just change the background here. So I've got this one here that is basically just switching these around, okay? And then I just right click in here and then just save that as a picture. And I've got one that I've already saved, so I'm just going to go in and change that. And there's it here. And then we just need to do the the fit here. Okay, so now we've got uh, the, the the sort of bad actors at the top rather than the bad actors being at the bottom. Now you could switch them to be at the top right, but then that would probably be a bit confusing here for this meantime between failures because then you'd have to change the the seat the invert this axis. You, you can't do it by just going into the the x axis, going to values. So the range and then invert range here, but um, and then and then you could do the same with the actual template. But I, I didn't really quite like that. So um, because you're starting with the, you're not, but they're not both starting from zero. That could be quite confusing. Okay, so um, a nice little um, example of how you can visualize three different aspects. You can visualize the availability or the unavailability. We need to update this title here. The mean time between failures and also the cost to really make it visually clear where the bad actors are and how bad they actually are in terms of cost and um, the other aspects. So hopefully you find this useful and it's something you can start to apply in your own business and some of your own visuals. And if you found the video useful, it's always appreciated if you could give it a, a thumbs up and a like. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, just hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a new video. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.